Hi everybody, this is Kim with Kim's Vinyl Expressions. Today we're going to stitch out an In The Hoop Bonnie Buddy, sorry, Bonnie Bunny from Designs by Juju. Um, this is what one of them looks like. There's a few different ways you can do it. This one I did in the um, 6x10 hoop and um, one set of ears already says Happy Easter on it. And then there's also another um, set for plain, so you can put whatever you want on it, or one to do applique. For this tutorial, we are going to do a five by seven um, with the applique ears. We're gonna do those and um, the egg on the front. This is done in two hoopings. You do the ears first, and then the second hooping is the body. So, um, like I said, for this tutorial, we're going to do the 5x7. And for the 5x7, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to need two pieces for the front and back of the bunny, 6x8. Um, so I have everything pre-cut. I have two 6x8s here. For the ears, um, we're going to need two 5.5x7 for the front and the back of the ears. So I have those done. And for the applique part of the ears, you're going to need two pieces of four and a half by five and a half. So I have these pre-cut and little jelly beans on it. And also for the applique for the front of the belly, um, which I'm going to do the egg, you can, it, there's two options. You can do an egg or you can do the heart. And I have that pre-cut as well. You'll also, um, the instructions also calls for a um, poly mesh stabilizer. I didn't have any, I had ran out. So I'm using a um, perforated, really light tear away, and this works just as well. And if you don't have either one, um, you can still use a tear away and just tear it out when you're done. So the first, um, the f oh, also, um, the font that I'm going to use for the tutorial is going to be the lemon drop half inch um, because I'm actually, I'm still going to put wording on this one even though it's smaller and with the applique, I'm just going to do the writing on top of the applique. So I'm using lemon drop, the Designs by Juju's lemon drop um, half inch for that. So the first step that we're going to do is the placement stitch. For the ears, um, for those who are new and don't know what a placement stitch is, um, the first stitch will stitch out a space, which is a placement stitch, a spot, and it's going to show you where to put your fabric. Then the second stitch will tack that down, and I'll show you that, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So we went ahead and tacked down the um, the fabric for the bunny ears. Um, if you saw the pictures before this part of the segment of the video, um, I did the tack I did the placement stitch, so it shows where to put your fabric, and I did now the tack down for that. So step four, um, three, and four is going to be the placement stitch for the fabric for the applique on the ears. So it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna do a stitch on each ear to show you where to place your fabric. Then you'll put your, step four, you'll put your fabric down on top of that, just like we did with this, and then tack that down as well. Okay, so we got the ears tacked down, and now we're gonna go ahead and cut it around for the applique. So for those who are new and who have not done applique before, all you're going to do is just cut around the stitching around each one. And you want to cut it as close to the, um, the stitching without cutting the stitching because when we do the satin stitch, it'll put it all in place. But um, if you cut a stitch, it's okay because one stitch isn't going to matter. It, like I said, it's going to do a satin stitch on it anyway, and it'll just cover all that up. So let me grab my scissors. So we'll just go ahead and 
put around this. Luckily, I had, well, I found <laughs> these, um, this jelly bean fabric. Someone had given me a pack of, a, a bag of fabric. Oh, I didn't realize I moved that. A bag of fabric last year. Tons and tons of fabric in it. And this fabric, the jelly bean fabric, was in there. But it wasn't regular, just cut fabric. It was too... Um, two really short, um, curtains. Somebody made curtains, so I don't know if it was for a little kid's room or, but it just seemed too small for a window, so I wasn't going to put it on the window anyway, so I utilize it and using it on here. It's been sitting in my closet since last year because I had no use for it. So I figured I'd take it apart and use it one day. If you're new to applique, don't let it stress you out if it does. I took me two years to try to do applique because I was so afraid of it. And my cousin had kept telling me, just go ahead. She, she, she does embroidery too. And she had told me it's not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. Um, so I should just go ahead and do it. And I waited two years because I was just that afraid to do applique. And I felt so dumb after, after I did it because it was very, very easy. And I was so intimidated by it. And I would watch videos. I would ask other people and everybody telling me that I'm making a big deal out of nothing. So... If you're new to applique and you're watching this for the first time without doing any applique yet, please don't let it stress you out. It's not as hard as it looks or as complicated. So, um, don't be me. <laughs> but, alright, so I went ahead and um, that's the applique. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the Happy Easter on here and my nephew's name here. And then um, I'm going to go back because I, I forgot to put it in order. So <laughs> that's actually the last stitch on my machine. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that out. And then the fifth step, according to Juju's... Um, file is going to be the satin stitch around here. So I'm going to do my wording first and then I'm going to go back to step five and I'm going to do the satin stitch which is going to just do the stitching all around the, the applique. So we did the satin stitch around the ears and the lettering that I did. I think I should have chose a lighter color but um, we did that and then the satin stitch around that so the applique is done so the last step that we have to um, the ears now is you're going to take your other piece of ear fabric and put it right side down on right, directly on top of what we just did and then do the final stitch and the final stitch is just going to tack all of this down and um, we'll be back after that so we got the ears tacked down. So what I'm going to do now is take it out of the hoop. And since this stabilizer is very light, I can just tear it right out. <clears throat> Put that to the side. And then you just want to take um, the excess stabilizer off. And 
and then let me get my other scissors. Before you, it's not now. Okay, so <clears throat> just take the excess stabilizer off, like I said. I love this stabilizer. I use it for quick and easy light things, designs. So I got to fix my tension on my bobbin thread. No bobbin thread in the back. It's odd. Okay, so I'm just going to cut these in half. Sorry if you hear a little squeaking. My dog has very bad separation anxiety and I have to keep my studio door open. So he knows I'm here. Okay, so we cut them in half. And we're just going to cut around them, just around the outline, the outer outline. And you want to leave like maybe a quarter or an eighth of an inch. You don't need to leave a lot, but you don't want to cut the stitches either. So just make sure you have... Um, enough room on the outside. Artorius. And also, when you're cutting, you're going to have some that is not sewn. And you can either stuff that if you want. Um, I'm not going to stuff the actual ear. Just cut a little extra off here. I just cut these now and use them later. And we need them and then we'll just go ahead and turn this right side out and these are very very easy to turn and for those of you who are wondering if you're new about the plastic that I had the stuff I cut off it's just water soluble stabilizer um, I put it on stuff that's like really fluffy so th when it's so when it's doing like um, satin stitch or lettering the fuzziness isn't coming through it and then when we're done we could just take it right off and see it just come off really easy and that's it for that one and we'll do the same thing with the second one Just make sure not to cut the stitches. Minky is very, very messy. I love this fabric, but it's just too messy. But when I'm done doing one project I have to get my little dust buster thingy and get up all the fuzz and get my lint brush and get all the fuzz off me all right so we have that 
and then do the same thing just turn it right side out And then I'll take my water soluble stabilizer off. Okay, and then we got that one. So you're gonna put these to the side and get the second hooping set up. You wanna get your stabilizer set up and um, your fabric. And let me just get that set up. Okay, so we're going to start the um, second hooping of the actual bunny itself. So I went ahead and I hooped my hoop with that um, perforated um, stabilizer. Don't mind that. I had two pieces and I always use my scrap, so I just tape them together. Um, so we're going to start just like we did with the, with the ears. The first step is going to be the placement stitch. And the second, um, the second step is going to be the tack down for the, the actual body fabric. So you want to make sure after you do the step one for the placement stitch, when you go to tack down your fabric, you want to make sure that your fabric is right side up. And we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we have the, back, um, the front part of the body tacked down. I guess in the right light, you can see that. Okay, and so the next step, three through seven, is going to be the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the whiskers, and um, we'll go ahead and run those steps and be back. Okay, so we did the face, um, which is steps three to seven. I already ran step eight, which is the placement stitch for your applique. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lay my fabric on that, and then I'm going to run step eight, which would be the tack down. All right, so I <clears throat> went ahead and ran step nine, which was to um, tack this down. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the, around the fabric. And I actually did the heart on this one. Because I already did the egg. So I want to see how it looked with the heart. Sorry, my screen went a little crazy. All right, so got the heart, the fabric for the heart cut. And I'm going to put it back on the machine and I'm going to run the satin stitch, which is going to go around the heart. Okay, so I went ahead and did the um, applique, I'm, I'm sorry, the satin stitch around the heart. And I also ran the next step, which does the two placement stitches here for the ears. Um, so we're going to go ahead and you're going to want to um, just tape down one ear at a time. Um, because I find it easier to do that. So when it when your needle moves to the second one, because you're going to do this one first. And then when it moves to the second one to tack it down, even though I had taped it, it still ripped it off. So I'm only going to do one at a time. And when my needle gets into the next space, the next place to tack it down, then I'll put my... Um, my um, ear on so what you want to do is you want to put your ear down so the excess fabric is outside of the placement stitch um, and what I usually do is I'll just fold one up so I can see where the actual stitching starts and I put it just a little bit 
above the placement stitch. And let me take that down and then I can show you. And you can use painter's tape. Um, sometimes I use washi tape. Either one will work fine. And I usually put it so that my stitches go through the tape because the painter's tape is so easy to just rip off and it doesn't get stuck in the stitching. So, <clears throat> make sure I got it where I want it. Okay, so this is how you're going to want to do it. You want to do it so the ear um, is actually inside of the design and you want to make sure to just put it in a spot um, so when we do the last step it won't get the ear. But now it's going to go ahead and just run the tack down right here and we'll go ahead and get that done. All right, so I went ahead and tacked down the first ear. Um, and on my, I'm doing this one on my multi-needle. I did my six by 10 on my single needle. So if you have a single needle, I'm, I'm sorry, a multi-needle, you can put both ears at the same time. And um, I didn't think about that because the needle is not down all the way like on my single needle. So, you can do that if you have a multi-needle. I know on my single needle, I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do the second one. Make sure, for some reason, this one looks a little smaller than the first one. Where the, sti where the stitches stop. All right, so let me just Okay, so I went ahead and taped that one down, and I'm going to go ahead and tack that. All right, so we went ahead and tacked the second one down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my painter's tape off. And I forgot to change which needle I wanted to use. So my first tack down is gray. And my second tack down is red, but that's okay because once it's, this is done, we're not going to see those colors anyway, so I don't really care so much for it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the last step. Sorry, that's my phone. And what, we're, what I want to do is you, you want to make sure that your ears are inside of the, um, the bunny outline. Because if it's out a little bit, um, you have a chance on snagging that in the stitching when you do the final stitch, which we're going the final step, which we're going to do now. So what I'm going to do, because I always have a habit of getting my needles, I mean my ears sewn in on any um, stuffy that I do. I don't know why. I always make sure it's inside, but... I always get it one way or another. So I'm just going to do something a little different this time. I am going to fold them up and tape them down and make sure that they are in the, um, the bigger part of the design, which would be the face, because I know that if I do that, that is not going to get caught in the, the final step. I don't know why. I think it might move after I put it in there all the time. But I always wind up getting it in the stitching. And then I have to open it up a little bit and redo it. And it's just a real hassle. But that's my fault. It has nothing to do with the design. Um, okay, so this is what I did. I did it this way. So here is the outline of the bunny. 
head so I know it is not going to get snagged in that stitching. So you're going to want to take your final feet piece of fabric and put it over with the right side down like that. And you can, depending on how you want to do it, um, you can hold it in place, you can tape it in place. But I am going to tape this in place because I want to make sure it's down really snug and not moving around <clears throat> while it's doing the final stitch, the final step. And sorry, my phone keeps going off um, with this virus going on. My husband went back out on the road today after being home for a bit. So I'm a little concerned. So I'm keeping my phone on in case anything. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I cut off the vo I don't want to cut off the volume because if he does call, I don't want to miss his call in case something is wrong. So if my phone beeps again, I apologize. Okay, so this is what I did, and it's kind of snug the way I want it, and the reason why I do that is because being that the minky fabric is stretchy, I don't want to leave too much, um, too much, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for right now, but I don't want it too loose, so it'll be too stretchy when I go to stuff it. So um, we're going to go ahead and run the last step is going to just do the whole outline and tack this down. Okay, so I <clears throat> went ahead and got the last step to, um, tacked down. So I'm going to remove it from the hoop. I just want to get my tape off. And I'll just tear it out of my hoop. And then I'll just tear this out. Get all the stabilizer out. I try to get as much stabilizer out as I can of this because I just, depending on which stabilizer you use, if you move it around a little bit, um, you can hear it. And I know I won't with this because it's so light and thin, but it's just habit. I do it anyway. I just try to get as much off as I can. And this stabilizer, like I said, is pretty thin, so it's really easy to tear and get it out. <clears throat> I actually really like this stabilizer and I use it a lot um, on certain things I do because it is so thin and it's so easy. I get some tear away sometimes that are just a medium and trying to tear it to get it out of the des a, a different design, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> so I, I really like this, but you don't want to use the stabilizer on like really thick thick materials because it won't work too well all right so i got enough of it i'm fine with this for now so um we just grab my other scissor thought i had it right here one moment Oh, my applique is oh here they are all right I like using these to cut around um, and I'm just gonna cut around the um, the stitching but you want to leave a little bit maybe like a quarter of an inch around you don't want to get too close to the stitches and cut them But what I do is when I get to this spot right here, I try to cut in like a little bit, like right next to the stitching. So when I turn it around and stuff it, it doesn't look like it's stuck in there. 
sometimes that has happened to me. So that's how I found a way to get around that. And then when you get to, get, make sure where that is, to the opening where you're going to stuff it, what I do, I'm making sure I don't pass it, so I want to put my finger there. <clears throat> you want to leave some extra out. I'll show you what I mean. When you're cutting, um, so when you do, after you stuff it, After you stuff it, I usually leave whatever amount it's going to be um, down. And I guess you can see better here because you can see where the opening is. And I leave some down here because after I after you stuff it, you're going to fold these on the inside. And then you can either sew them closed with like a ladder stitch or... Um, you can use fabric glue. Either one will work. I've done both. Both have worked fine. I usually use um, fabric glue because sometimes I give them to my dogs. Um, certain certain stuffies that I, I test and and um, or do videos for that I know I'm not going to need for anything. I'll stuff them and give them to my dogs and let my dogs play with them. I um, got another dog back in October... On Halloween, brought the dog in my house. It was a stray that was living in my yard for about eight months. And I finally decided to bring her in and try to make her a part of the family. So I made a set of Juju's um, casino dog toys and a Betty Bear. And she took that Betty Bear and she that is her favorite, most favorite toy. And she still has it. She still plays with it. She rarely touches the casino toys, but I think that one is because my dog, my other dog, takes it from her and um, never lets her play with those. So that's what I do. So the fabric glue works really well. I haven't had any issues with it, any um, anything coming apart with that. So whichever is easier for you and if you're not a sewer and you... Don't know what a ladder stitch is. You can look that up on Google. and um, But depending on what you want to do, that's up to you. So I left that much and I don't need that much. So I'm just going to, like you can see where the stitching is here. That's a little too excessive. You don't need that much. So I'm actually going to cut that in half. And but you want to make sure, you, know, you just have to eyeball it. Because I know when I turn this in, that's going to be enough. So now we're going to go ahead and turn it right side out. I'll try and get those ears first. So I can pull it. It'll be easier to pull. Even though the, the ears were taped down. So I could just take that tape off now. Okay. And pop out all, everything here. And take my water soluble stabilizer off. I use that for the face. that's it um that's what it looks like finished not well almost finished so you'll stuff it and then um which i'm not going to do with this one right this second but all you if you're going to stuff it stuff it some people like to leave them flat um depends on what you want it for so what you'll do is stuff it to whatever makes you happy um the head, the body, and then you turn these two tabs, lips, whatever you want to call them, right on the inside and like just get it a little rounded, however you want to do it. And that's it. And then you sew it 
use your fabric glue, whatever you're going to do. And this is your bear. I mean, I'm sorry, your bunny. And um, that's cute. I like it. I like the way that one came out. But I still have to do a little bit of pulling out here. And <laughs> sometimes when I get everything out, I iron it. I don't know why. I just do. And um, I guess with the minky fabric, because it, it moves so much and it looks like it folds in when it doesn't. But when you stuff it, if you're using this fabric, if you stuff it, it'll get its shape. Um, it doesn't look like it now. It looks out of shape, but it will get its shape. I promise you that because I've already done these. <laughs> All right. So there is your bunny. And that's it. That's all we need to do. If you have any questions, comment on the video. Um, you can send me a message. I'm also one of the moderators of Juju Design. So you can get me there. And um, I'll answer any questions you have. And I hope you like the tutorial. And see you soon. Have a good day.